Welcome to the channel. My name is Sammy Wireless, and here we talk about networking and cybersecurity. So I want to talk today a little bit about Zero Trust Fortinet way. And before we get started, of course, any opinions in this video are my own and not uh, necessarily reflective of any past, present, future employers, people who decided not to hire me, etc. Anybody else in the world? So when we talk about Zero Trust, we have to keep in mind Zero Trust is a concept, not a product, not a solution. Uh, it is a concept. So there are certain areas of zero trust that Fortinet is going to deal in. Other areas Fortinet is not going to have a solution or product such as Active Directory, right? We want to make sure that we don't just give everybody domain admin access. We're uh, applying that principle of least privilege uh, in order to provide that more zero trust approach. Uh, really, when I think of zero trust, I think of principle of least privilege, only providing the access they need, and not providing anything extra that could possibly increase our attack surface. So two solutions come to mind uh, from a Fortinet perspective. There is NAC and there is ZTNA. I have a full-fledged video on NAC. Uh, if you are interested, uh, go check out that video. Today, I'm really gonna focus on ZTNA. And there's a few different concepts to it. There's a few different options. And so it can get confusing for a lot of people. There's a lot of marketing out there. It's really generic, it's not really specific. And so I find that I'm having lots of conversations around ZTNA um, and kind of establishing what it is, what it can do, what it can't do. Uh, and so I want to help out, hopefully, uh, for you today to help you understand uh, what it is, what it, what it can and can't do. So first thing is components. Uh, we do require a FortiGate and FortiClient. So FortiGate is going to be the access proxy. Another way we can define it is the enforcement point. The Forta client is going to provide telemetry to and from the device. And we're going to do uh, posture, a uh, device posturing as well. So those are kind of the two roles of FortiGate and Forta client have in this conversation. It's important to note that Forta client is required for ZTNA. If you have a device that doesn't support Forta Client, such as a printer, a camera, uh, an IoT device, it's really where NAT comes into the conversation, dealing with those headless devices um, that aren't going to support a full-fledged agent like Forta Client. So to explain ZTNA, I'm going to start with the VPN replacement, but there's more to ZTNA than just that. Um, so don't go ahead and stop if you're oh, if you're not looking for a VPN replacement. But that's typically where the story makes the most sense, and then we'll talk about the uh, the other ZTNA options that we have within the Fortinet ecosystem. So the first thing is going to be kind of your, uh, I don't know why I drew that upside down, but uh, you know, your traditional VPN, your upside down user is going to go ahead and VPN here into some sort of concentrator, could be a firewall, could be something else. And on the other end of that, we're going to have our corporate resources. We're going to have maybe, um, you know, a printer, Etc. Uh, whatever the user is actually accessing on the other end of this VPN. Now ZTNA kind of takes that um, and, and applies that zero trust principle or principle of least privilege. And so we're going to have our right side up user here actually have application specific tunnels, AS tunnels, uh, and they're going to actually go to a particular application, a particular printer, right? So now what this allows us to do is every time that the end user asks for resources, we can do a posture check. We can check the ZTNA tags, the zero trust tags of things like OS updates, things like antivirus, uh, things like uh, the Windows firewall, and lots more, I'm not going to get into it. This may change, of course, as time progresses. So we can leverage these zero trust tags in order to authenticate the user, not only as a user within our organization, but a user that has these particular uh, characteristics, uh, as well as should be able to access a particular application, right? We can do it by user and user group as well, right? And we may be able to tweak this as needed, maybe to print something, you don't need as many permissions, 
um, but in order to access the financial servers, we want to have all this and make sure that it's as secure as possible. So thinking about that, there's kind of two core ways that we can do ZTNA. The one we talked about is proxy. Now we can achieve this in two different ways. We can use a proxy policy. Now, if you're on 7.0, this was called a ZTNA policy. Uh, in 7.2, it's called a proxy policy and with any other kind of proxy policies. Uh, or we can use a firewall policy in ZTNA mode. Uh, this makes administration a little bit easier, kind of makes more sense to the traditional firewall uh, administrator. But we also have the ZTNA uh, standard firewall policy. So it's not the ZTNA firewall policy, it's a standard firewall policy. And essentially what we're doing here is leveraging dynamic IP MAC lists in order to allow or deny traffic. Uh, and these are in our source. So the important thing to note here is that this is not specifically going to proxy. This is just going to be a standard firewall rule, accept or deny, run these UTM functions if we want them. There's no proxy involved here, which means we have pretty much anything um, that we would typically run through a firewall can run through that without a problem. Now, one thing I want to mention here is it does require the FortiGate to be default gateway. So if you don't have the FortiGate as your default gateway on your production subnet, that might be a pain point. Um, the FortiClient telemetry is, is only going to be sent to the FortiGate if uh, that default gateway is the FortiGate. And that's how it's going to differentiate if you have you know, 100, 1,000 FortiGates, obviously there has to be a way for it to scale and that's kind of the way that it scales. Now when we're talking about the proxy. Uh, we may have some other things going on here, um, such as dealing with certificates, right? Because the certificate presented will be presented from the FortiGate, not necessarily the end application. Um, as well as the fact that the ZTNA proxy only supports TCP connections. Uh, there is no support for UDP. Uh, with that, I think the only other thing that I'll kind of wrap up with here is again, if we're running any headless devices, uh, NAC is a great solution. Uh, NAC can do a lot of this dynamic firewall policy. The big difference in ZTNA is going to be this remote access that wasn't in NAC before. The fact that we can use the ZTNA proxy as well, whether we're inside or outside of our network, we can proxy. Um, that's going to be the big uh, addition, the thing that we haven't seen before. Uh, from a zero trust perspective from Fortinet. So with that, I'd like to thank you for viewing. If you have any questions or anything, leave them in the comments below and have a great day. I'll see you next time.